All right, guys. This is this is kind of a I don't know. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with proofs. Right. As the last section of the chapter, and we just kind of are taking a little bit of a, a tangent to the side here and doing something a little bit different. So I think you guys will find this kind of easy compared to proofs. Yep. So, uh, so we're talking about isosceles triangles. Uh, and there's very specific parts, kind of like we talked about with right triangles. There are very specific parts to a right triangle, legs, hypotenuse, and so on. There's very specific parts to an isosceles triangle. Uh, this one's kind of... I'm not sure why they did the drawing like this. Typically, that triangle would be set up on its base and drawn that way, and that's why we call it the base. But uh, the base is the side that's not congruent to one of the other ones. So the two legs are the congruent pieces for the isosceles. Um, between those two legs is the vertex angle. And so you need to make sure you understand that that angle up there is the vertex angle, and then the two angles at the base are the base angles. And really what you need to notice is that the base angles are opposite the two legs. That's the critical visual thing here. Yep. And so as we go across from one leg, we get one of the base angles. Go across from the other, we get the other base angle. Um, or you could think of it as, you know, the, the vertex angles where the two legs meet and the other two are your base angles. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's, that's another way you could think of it. The vertex is where the two legs meet and so the other two are the base angles. Yeah. Because there's very specific relationships between the legs yeah. and the two base angles. That's right. So you need to know which ones are which. So, uh, and it ends up being that uh, in an isosceles triangle, the two base angles are always congruent to each other. So this theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the two opposite angles are congruent. What we mean by that are the angles opposite the two uh, legs of the two congruent sides. Or you could even say change that to just a little bit of the base angles are also congruent. Yeah, base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Yep, always. And now we don't know what they measure. Right. Until we figure out, uh, but they're always congruent to each other. Yep. So it's kind of nice with this. If you know one angle, you can figure out the other two. Right. Yeah, that you know, helps us. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you know the vertex, with you know the other two by just yeah. subtracting from one eighty divided com by two. That and, combination of one eighty again. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of yeah. nice. This this is really an easy a setback, a nice easy. Ending, to, Ending the to the chapter, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. So, hey. just what you said. Yeah. So right here, um, you know, it, we got to figure out what x is, and so just trying to figure this out. Well, if you see that the triangle is isosceles by the hash marks there, and then how do we figure out what x is? Well, you, you just got to remember, you know, that the place where the two legs meet is the vertex, and so that's at that 36 degrees, so that means that 72 and 9x are, the bo are both base angles, so they're congruent based on the theorem we just learned on the previous uh, slide. So then all I have to do is 36 is kind of a distractor more than anything else, so all i got to do is say, okay, 9x equals 72, and so x equals 8. And that's all you really got to do there. Yeah. You know, just which ones are the ones that are congruent. Mm -hmm. So then we look at number... Uh, or the second triangle down here, and it, and it kind of goes in the reverse, you know, the base angle theorem converse, which says that if the two base angles of a, uh, or a, w Is this not coming in in the right order? Oh, there we go. Well, maybe that not. That triangle shouldn't be there yet. Yeah. Ignore that triangle, guys. Yeah, because that theorem is going to come in right there. It isn't? is. Okay, yeah. so sorry. We didn't see that. Rewind that from your memory. But, so anyways, here, here we have that, uh, we have that the vertex angle is 106, and we have that those two sides are congruent, so I have an isosceles triangle. Here's that thing where I was saying that if we know one of the angles, we can basically figure out the other two because we know that if 106 is the vertex angle, that essentially x and y have to be equal to each other. Yeah, kind of a distractor there. That yeah. There's two different variables because yeah, they're not different. They're not different. So we know x is equal to y, but I think they just were messing with you a little bit. But basically all you got to do is, is use what you know about a triangle now and say 180 minus 106 is, what is that, 54. 74. 74. Oh. I'm not add. <laughs> so 74. Thank you, Mr. Scritchfield. So if I take that, then I know my I know x and y are the same. So I just take that 74 and cut it in half. Yep. And there and x is 37 and y is also 37. Yeah. Okay. So we are. We're going to have that theorem come in here, and that will apply to the bottom. Line. There we go. So there's my friend Converse of the base angles theorem, which basically says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the two sides opposite them are also congruent. And so if the two base angles are congruent, guys, then you know that the two legs are congruent. And that's basically what I think about. When I say legs, I'm saying the two 
sides that are congruent to one another. Opposite those angles. Yeah, yeah opposite those angles. So if the arrow, arrows were to draw in, you would see an arrow coming from that top base angle that would go diagonal to the 36, and you would see an arrow from the bottom base angle go diagonal over to the 5x plus 1. 16 then becomes the distractor in this case. You don't need it. And so all I'm going to do is go 5x plus 1 equals 36. And I move things around. Minus 1, I get 35. Divide by 5, and I get 7. So basically what this does, we kind of talked about equilateral triangles. Uh, where was that? At the beginning of chapter, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the chapter. And uh, the fact that equilateral and equiangular are the same kind of triangle. Well, this is kind of true of, of isosceles. If there are two sides congruent, then we have two angles congruent. Oh, very if good. we have two angles congruent, then we have two sides congruent. And so isosceles triangles work that way, and equilateral triangles work that way. If we have three sides congruent, then we have all three angles congruent, and the other way around. Great segue. So it works for both isosceles and equilateral. Yeah. Because now we're going to talk about those. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. Da -da -da -da. And uh, they take these corollaries, which, uh, again, this floats a little bit from the fact that an equilateral triangle is also isosceles. Yep. Uh, because the definition of isosceles is at least two sides congruent. And so, um, so really, we've already said this. We talked about this earlier. If, if a triangle is equilateral, then it's equiangular. If it's equiangular, then it's equilateral. And again, it would be nice if you guys learned how to spell these things. <laughs> it's E-Q-U-I, lateral for side, angular for angle. Uh, and so we know that all three of these, because we know that all three angles are congruent, we know all three sides are congruent. And so we could set any two of them that we choose to be equal to each other to set up an equation here. Uh, to find x in here. So I don't know if they have, no, they don't have an equation come in. But we could pick whatever. Maybe the 21 minus x is equal to the x plus 5, and uh, the, the side that has the negative x on it, add x to both sides, and we get 2x. Uh, subtract 5 from both sides, we get 2x is equal to 16. Divide by 2, and that's where the 8 comes from. Okay, but you could have set up any of those two sides to be equal to each other. So... Some nice arcs in that triangle. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful arc work there. Okay, our last slide here. Solve if possible. So basically what we want to do is, is can we, how can we solve this? Well, we need to know what kind of triangle it is first before we can do anything else. So, I mean, you got to kind of think of this as a process of elimination. What can I actually figure out? Yeah, the angle is the easiest. Yeah, thing the angle, because you know that every triangle is bound by 180 degrees, so that, that would be a place that I would always start off. So if one angle is 20 and the other angle is 80, well, then that means that that other angle has to be 80. 80 also. Now, even though it doesn't look right, yeah. don't ever trust the drawing. Trust the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so X has to be 80. Well, if those two base angles, if I have two angles that are 80, as Mr. Scritchfield said a few minutes ago, if two angles are the same, then we know that two sides are the same. And so now I can say that 40 and the 2y plus 2 are the same because if I draw a diagonal from the 80 across, that goes to 2y plus 2. And if I draw from that x diagonally, that's going to go to that 40. So 2y plus 2 equals 40. Minus 2, I get 38. Divide by 2, and I get 19. Yep. And so there Pretty you go. You have to solve the angle there first, though. Yeah, you do have to solve that angle. There's to no way around it. that it's isosceles. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. This one looks complicated. So here, the problem is here, guys is that even though we know that they're both isosceles, we can't really do anything here because I don't have an actual number. Right. I don't know one angle particularly. I need to know 40 degrees or 50 degrees or 20 degrees. I don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. And so since I don't know one angle outright, because X and Y make those numbers vary, I can't solve this. This is not enough information. Yeah. You just don't know. You need one angle. If I had one angle in that whole thing, mm -hmm. I'd be golden. I could solve all of them. Yeah, but I don't have any angles, so yeah. I'm out of luck. Yeah, I know that other one, bottom one is 3x, and I know that top one on the right is 7y, but that doesn't help me. Nope. Uh, I need a number somewhere. Yep. So, all right? All right. And that's what the instruction said. Solve if possible. That was not possible. So, we're done with the chapter. Yay! Woohoo! This was a long one. Yeah. Tough one for some of you, and so need to make sure that you are spending some good time reviewing for this test. Yep. It's a very important test. Uh, and so we're going to spend some time reviewing for it. So, All right. We'll practice some of this in class once again, guys.